This is the Sonarworks Sound ID reference and it's a headphone and speaker calibration software. If you have problems with the acoustics of your room or the sound of your speakers, this might be for you. This package comes also with a microphone that you need for the measurements of your room and the software that does that and all the corrections. But how exactly does this work and how can it help you to get better recordings and mixes? In today's video, I show you all of that. When you buy monitors or headphones, you soon notice that there are countless options and that they are all different in sound. The specific color of a speaker also affects how you hear and mix your music. A second main factor is the room where your speakers are in and it has a big influence on how you experience the sound. This is because of the size of the room, the absorption and the reflection of the sound waves in it. They can be absorbed and reflected by things like a table and walls. That reflection can cause problems. It can be that you don't hear certain frequencies in your room or you hear them too loud. Because of the sound coming back and meeting the original sound, it can cause sound cancellation and build up. And that will influence how you hear your mix. The more balance you hear from your speakers, the better your mix decisions. And Sound ID can help with that. The software only adjusts what you hear from your speakers. It does not change the sound you record, mix or produce. So I'm really curious what the measurement will do for my system and if it will get better. I will start with the software and measurements and after that I will give you an example of a mix that I did with SoundID and one without it. This is the SoundID reference software. It's a standalone version. You also have one for your door as a plugin. But first we work with the standalone version because uh, I want to make a calibration profile of my speakers and I will show you now how you do this. The first thing that you want to add is a new preset. So I go here, add new preset and I select here, select your calibration profile. And I can make a profile for my headphone or I create a new speaker profile. So I want this one. So we go here, then it opens up. Now I will start with the measurement, get started, select your speaker configuration while well, I'm in stereo. So here we go on the next. My phantom power is on for the microphone. Your input and output is routed to the same device. Yes, microphone signal cannot be heard through the speakers. Yes. So I go to the next one. Uh, here I have, it's the microphone. Yeah, that's good. Mine is already in here. Here we go to the next. Here's my sound craft. I can do a test. Left speaker, right speaker. That's the right speaker, yes. Listen, the following steps are designed to let the software know where your sweet spot is located. Reduce your output gain for the safety before playing test tone. Please adjust the volume of your output device. My voice should sound at normal conversation volume. That's actually good. Yes, my volume is set. Clear out anything you could bump into within your listening area. Yeah, I have this, so I made it already free. Hold the measurement microphone in your hand or use a stand if that is more convenient. Keep the microphone in the center of your listening spot. So that is with me over here. Adjust the mic to the level of your ears while seated. Point the microphone between your speakers. So this is all good. Start adjusting. Got it. Now I need to go with this one to the first. Stay where you are. Measurements in progress. Okay, cool. So now we have the measurements, save and finish. So I have a little bump here, which I know because that's the frequency that I really like in this room, but it's canceling each other here out on 100. This is actually really good. Bump 600 till up, I'm actually quite flat. It's just this here, this part. Yeah, interesting, really good. So here is Ableton. 
To make use of the plugin, you just go to your master. And even when you have already a mastering chain or you have some plugins, you just can uh, use the plugin and you put it as the last thing in the chain. So here is the profile of my speakers. You also can make a custom preset that you can find over here. With this, you are able to say, I don't want that Sonarworks is working on the low end or on the high end. Uh, or you only want that it's working here in the mid part. It depends on your speakers and how you like it. There's also an EQ, so you can boost or cut a certain frequencies out to your wishes. There's also a translation check, and with the translation check, you are able to listen to different presets. For instance, if you want to hear how your mix sounds in a car or in in-ear headphones or laptop, you are able to do that, and then you can adjust your mix towards that. For me, it was also important to test the software and I made it a song. I'm actually still working on it, but I made a quick mix. So uh, you will hear first the mix without the use of Sonarworks and then you will hear the mix with Sonarworks. Well, I clearly can hear a difference. I hear more openness. Also, the details come more out. The version where I don't use Sonarworks, I tend to focus more on the bass because yeah, the bass is quite nice in the room and a little bit too much. I'm a little bit less focused, it seems, on the mid-range and also on the high end. And with the new version, I'm more focused on what is actually really happening with the music. So for me, I find this an improvement and I will definitely use this on my mixes. I hope you enjoyed the video and if you have any more questions about Sound ID, ask them in the comment sections and I see you next time. Mm -hmm.